Good morning, people. Um, just missed that probably got this here. Just making a video for YouTube. Uh, it's really biochemistry. Um, and for a for a few reasons. Um, first of all, just explaining biochemistry to myself actually helps me remember it, and not just talk for any other subject as well. Um, and secondly, I just wanna. This is my first YouTube video, so I'm just wanna see the sort of feedback I get. I'm just trying to improve my communication skills. And generally, it helps for me to uh, basically, in air quotes, talk to myself about the subject. It makes me understand it more. And I thought I'll just um, make a video of it and see if it might help somebody else. Because generally, what happens is, especially for biochem, if you ask somebody, or oh, how do you study biochem, generally they just say, oh, it's very difficult, or it's just a lot of memorizing. Yeah, it is, but if you actually understand what's happening, it actually helps in a lot of other subjects like pathology or um, for example physiology actually all links up um, but generally if you're studying biochem right now it's probably in your first or second year in medical school so um, you don't really have an idea of pathology I would think but still um, if you understand what's happening in biochem it will make your life a lot more easier especially in pathology where you, when they tell you a disease, you know why it happens because of the pathway behind it. But let's explain that very soon. Um, at the end of the video, please, if you could, give me some constructive feedback on how I can improve or something. And if people do seem to like this video, I wouldn't mind making a few more. It actually helps me out as well. So the time limit's very constricted because YouTube has a 15 minute, I think, threshold. And after that, they won't let you up to it. Um, put videos up so I might have to put this in a few parts but um, today I'm just going to be explaining uh, glycolysis I think it's because um, from whatever, whatever textbook I've read or wherever you are in the world generally in biochemistry it's the off with glycolysis um, it's actually understandable because it's simple again that's in air quotes it's simple um, I'm just going to give you some feedback, on how, I mean not feedback, I'm just going to give you some advice on how to study biochem and starting before I start actually start this. Uh, for any pathway you learn in biochemistry, you got to keep in mind that what we're trying to aim for is ATP. Now that might sound strange, but if you actually think about it, the only reason you're alive right now is because of ATP. Everything in your body will actually run on ATP, um, your muscles that you move. Um, the, when you're thinking, everything, even the cell, if it has no ATP, it will die. That cell will actually die. So whenever you think about a pathway, you think, wait, what's the end product or what's been used? It always will be ATP. And you always find glucose related to something in the middle. Uh, there's a really good bo um, book that I use for biochem. It's uh, Lippincott. It has a blue cover. I'll just, I might show you that book later if it's just nearby. I don't think it is. But anyway, um, for any pathway that you study in uh, biochemistry um, a pathway is just like molecules that be changed over time into the final molecule that goes to another pathway and just be used um, I don't want to confuse it too much but I'm just going to stop it right there but for every pathway you have something called a regulatory enzyme now what that enzyme is that enzyme actually controls the pathway or enzymes control the actual pathway so um, whenever you have a pathway to learn for an exam, it's really important that for every pathway you know which, which regulatory enzyme works on that. At the time you probably won't realise, but afterwards when you do something like pharmacology, you realise that you can actually get drugs that actually affect that particular regulatory enzyme. And if you can affect that enzyme, you can control the full pathway. So therefore you can control the metabolism of that patient you will have eventually. So let's just continue with this. I wrote everything out beforehand. So what I want you guys to do is not just copy. I just want you to sit and listen and try and understand what I'm trying to say. Because if you understand what I'm saying, biochemistry will actually, I think, it's going to sound cocky, but <laughs> I think it will make sense to you afterwards. Um, I don't want to show my face right now because I don't want a really beautiful distraction in your life right now. <laughs> now I'm just messing. Um, okay. First of all, what I want to start off with is glucose. That's, that's where we start off from glycolysis. Um, so what's happening this? Imagine all this is in the cell right now. Now glucose, you're taking up glucose into the cell. And you're taking this glucose up by some, some special transport called uh, glucose 
specific transport or sometimes they call it or they call it a glute proteins. Glute right here like I wrote glute G L U T one. It just spends uh, it's short for glucose transporter one. Now there's different types of these transporters. What you don't remember about these glute proteins is the um, different different types, type one, type two, type three and type four, type five. They're in different parts of the body, and what you don't remember is a, is one of these. You don't have to keep in mind, GLUT four is insulin dependent. That means that uptake uh, protein, it only takes up glucose into a cell when there's insulin present. Now, um, I don't I didn't want to throw you like guys in the deep end, but I just it's uh, give you a bit of background information. Insulin is present when there's already glucose in the body. You about a lot of you already knew that. Uh, it was like uh, the but still like a lot of people it's very hard for them to understand that when there's glucose in the body your beta cells will actually release insulin which will, will be released into the body and therefore this insulin allows these glute 4 receptors to take up glucose but if you don't understand that right now don't worry um it's nothing really big but i just want to show that now glucose is being taken up to the cell and it gets phosphorylated Phosphorylated means it adds a phosphate group to the actual molecule. So if glucose is being phosphorylated, it means a phosphate group has been added into the glucose structure. Now, what you see here is glucose six phosphate. What it's trying to say to you in this name is that the phosphate group has been added to position six of glucose. Uh, a lot of the things in biochemistry will have really big long names, but if you study them names carefully, they actually tell you what's happening. Like for example, especially in enzymes, they'll tell you exactly what's happening. So the reason why we phosphorylate glucose here is, is because we want to trap that glucose into the cell. So if you phosphorylate it, it's stuck inside the intracellular part. So therefore, it's actually committed to continue the food glycolysis pathway. It can't escape out of the cell again. And there's two enzymes that do that. It's hexokinase and glucokinase. Now these two are located in different parts of the body. For example, this is everywhere. And they both have different affinities for glucose. And if you want to go into detail about that, that's actually studied. Um, it's actually obviously very good in the book. So I don't want to throw you in a deep end, like I said before. I just I want you to know there's a clear difference between these two. And um, the, this this pathway just continues. Glucose 6-phosphate gets converted to fructose 6-phosphate. Now, it will be very helpful if you have a picture, like a um, schematic drawing of these molecules in proper 2D form. Uh, this structure is not very different. What you have here is isomerase, isomer changes it. Just study these names, it will make sense to you. I don't want to really throw you in the deep end here. Um, a lot of the time, uh, what people will tell you is you have to memorise, like... Point blank, just memorize everything in biochem. That's not the case. If you understand what's happening in this pathway, it'll be very easy for you to memorize it. You don't have to remember all these big words that you're seeing right now. Uh, what's happening is when you phosphorylate this glucose, it gets converted to fructose, and then we add another phosphate group to it. And that what we're doing is we're generally building up glucose, and this is what happens is there's a splitting stage right here. And this continues on. So I'm just going to break it down right now. Uh, glucose 6 phosphate goes to fructose 6 phosphate by an enzyme. Everything in red is an enzyme. Phosphor, glucose, isomerase. Um, then you have fructose 6 phosphate. And this, I uh, really want you to remember this 6 phosphor fructose 1 kinase is, is like this. I put, I've put asterisks next to three enzymes in this full pathway. One is here on hexokinase, glucokinase. One is here on six foot to one kinase, and one one will be at the end uh, on pyruvic kinase. Uh, these three enzymes actually control this full pathway, so I'm going to explain to you later on how. Uh, fructose six phosphate uh, gets converted to fructose one six biphosphate or bisphosphate, as they sometimes say. Um, so what's happening is the enzyme name is telling you what's happening here. Six phosphor fructose. This is this part of the enzyme name is actually referring to the molecule that's acting on. Um, one kinase. Whenever you see kinase, it means that this molecule, I mean this enzyme, is actually adding a phosphate group to something, and the number before it suggests what, or no, it tells you 
what position is actually added in that uh, phosphate group too. And sometimes in the book, they actually abbreviate this to PFK1, phosphophotokinase 1. They don't even mention the 6 because it's not really important because what the enzyme is doing is, it's just adding a phosphate group to the first position. Now this enzyme, there's a the, the regulatory system of this will confuse you at the start unless you um, look at it carefully because the names sometimes become really familiar, I mean similar. And... Um, I'll show you that just in a minute so you guys don't get confused when you test chromes. Well, what happens is that this, after the phosphate group has been added to position 1, this has converted to fructose 1,6-biphosphate or bisphosphate. There's no S there, but sometimes they are the S. And there's obviously more enzymes, I don't want to bore you. And this gets split into two different molecules, dihydroxyacetate phosphate, I mean acetone phosphate, and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Now this, I'm just going to continue this side. Generally, this is what happens. Uh, glyceride 3 phosphate gets basically dehydrogenase. Um, I want to give you guys a tip here. I don't want to explain every single enzyme here because you probably don't get bored. Um, whenever you don't know what something is, like for example, dehydrogenase, all you have to do is go to Google, go to search, um, type in define, the word define, D E F I N. And type in this and it'll give you the perfect definition of what that thing is. And that's for anything, not just for biochemistry, it's for anything. If you don't know what anything is, you just type in define and just type in what it is like um, highlight or whatever I have on my desk right now and tell you what it is. So, especially for biochem, that's very useful because sometimes you don't know what something does and it just gives you a very short description of what it does and it explains to you perfectly and it clears everything up. So, that that's a good little tip. Um, slowly these molecules they're getting changed and these names kinase suggests phosphate group mutase uh, the way I remember that is just mutation therefore if you look at what's happening 3 to 2 um, water's been dehydrated that's been dehydrated the water's coming out uh, this part is going to pyruvate now I can't I can talk to you about like how these molecules look differently and everything, but that's just going to bore you. What I really want to talk to you about is the regulatory enzymes. Because I can bet you any money that if you have a test and they brought up glycolysis or any other pathway, they're going to ask you regulatory enzymes. They have to. That's the thing that, you have, that actually controls the full pathway. Uh, even in, for example, you have genetic diseases where some children are born with a defect in an enzyme. The reason why it's so important is because generally when it's enzymes that actually control pathways, if them enzymes are blocked, if this is blocked right now, all of this is not going to happen. And if this is really important, which it is, that child's going to have some really big problems. So that's why all of this becomes really important all of a sudden, if you look at it that way. So let's just start off with hexokinase and glucokinase. Hexokinase is actually inhibited by glucose 6-phosphate. Now, you might think, wait, that's a bit strange, why is that happening? Well, that's because, if you think about it, if you, if every cell in your body, there's not just one cell, there's thousands, millions, wherever, there's loads of cells. So if this glucose only keeps going to one cell and other cells don't get glucose, like I said before, them cells won't produce ATP. And if they don't produce ATP, that cell's going to die. So what's happening is as soon as a cell takes up glucose, glucose 6-phosphate inhibits that enzyme, so it can't take up more glucose until that glucose 6-phosphate gets moved on therefore it's no longer inhibiting hexokinase uh, therefore glucose can be taken up a bit more therefore it, like, it gives like um, limits to itself like you, don't, you only you take up what you need in that sense now I've already reached 14 minutes so I'm just going to cut it there I'm just going to continue to another part right now